we look at all significant intercepts, which is almost a, over 180 intercepts now, the average weighted average grade of those intercepts is uh, 1,580 kilogram, uh, grams sub equivalent over an average of almost 0.8 meters. Hello to all viewers tuning in to Assay TV. I'm delighted to be catching up with Joseph Herbert today. It's, he's CEO of Outcrop Silver and Gold, and Outcrop are developing world-class silver and gold assets in Colombia, of course. So welcome, Joseph. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure being with you, Adam. Yeah, great. So let's start off by framing the company. Uh, could you give us a high-level view uh, of the company and the history? Yeah, we, um, we, we've been around a while, but actually the main focus of the company for the last uh, eight years has been Colombia. Uh, we've spent enough time there to where we're actually, I would consider ourselves experts on it. Um, the entire crew is um, uh, Colombian, except for our VP of exploration from Mexico out of, of, out of actually uh, Fruited, London Mining, Fruited de Norte, real strong guy. Um, we, uh, we've learned a way around the, the kind of obtuse parts of the mining law. And then, but, but in particular, we've also been able to really nail the social license aspects because we got an extremely high level of support in the community. Um, otherwise, what we really are focusing on is our Santa Ana discovery in Colombia. Um, I really think we're one of the, one of the very few list of companies with a rapidly expanding high quality resource. And when I refer to quality, I'm in particular referring to extreme high grades. Mm -hmm. And uh, that project we're close to taking from the discovery stage to the um, next stage of value, which will be a resource report by the end of the year. Mm. Excellent. That's a great summary. And we'll delve into a lot of those points that you've touched on in a bit more detail. But let's start off with some of the news around the drilling campaign. Uh, obviously, looking at Santa Ana, your flagship project um, in Falan and Tolima Department, Colombia. Um, yeah. Could you share us uh, an update on the campaign there and how you're getting to some of these high grades that you described? Yeah, you know, it's curious, but just for a, the, an easy way to look at it is if we look at all significant intercepts, uh, it, which is almost a, over 180 intercepts now, the average weighted average grade of those intercepts is uh, 1,580 kilogram, uh, grams so equivalent over an average of almost 0.8 uh, meters. Um, what we, um, and, and curiously enough, is that um, some of our best drill assays project to date have actually been in the last month. Uh, part of that is um, getting into areas that are devoid of any uh, historic Spanish mining. And, but then the other is we're drilling deeper because that's one, of, one easy objective of the resource delineation. Uh, and also we're seeing a strong epithermal overprint kind of in the gross center of the system that the Spaniards really didn't touch. But um, the, the really high correlation with grade is, um, and it's, um, it's repetitive, is, is we're starting to see a lot of coarse native gold, coarse native silver, coarse electrum. Uh, coarse argentites like pyrogorite, and um, and that's not that's becoming a little bit more predictable now. So we're we're, we're really excited about um, that. Uh, the other thing too is that um, uh, we're drilling, uh, you know, resource on probably less than twelve percent of the total property, and um, before the year's over, we'll kind of be marching south, and and we control a mine down there called uh, Frias. And it itself produced 7.8 million ounces of silver at 1.3 kilograms uh, recovered grade. And, you know, we kind of look at it as a, as a 18 kilometer long anchor to the south and anchor to the north where we're working. And it's just, just really some, some um, really exciting developments, particularly as it re relates to grade. Excellent. Yeah. So what's the strategy to really define it from here? You mentioned you've got more coarse results coming through. Um, and you're getting quite excited about how the drilling's sort of ramping up in terms of what it's returning. Uh, but what's the strategy to really define this resource from here? Um, 
I, th I think actually we're we're fairly close on a on an internal estimation basis already. Right. Uh, the internal guidance is between forty five and fifty five silver equivalent ounces at between uh, five fifty and seven fifty gram silver equivalent. Um, we have three rigs going. Uh, I think we're on pace to hitting that. Uh, you know, uh, plus or minus fifty million silver equivalent ounces. That's kind of a stake in the ground or a milestone that that uh, other companies and, and investors want to see. Uh, but really, simultaneous with that fifty, we're working way ahead of that uh, that asset that projected asset cutoff for the for the independent QP. Um, what we want to do is raise the bar and uh, go to the next you know stage, which would be a hundred million silver equivalent ounces, and uh, we we think that's possible within 12 months after the first report. So excellent. So some of the catalysts, the near term and longer term catalysts that investors should be watching out for? Well, the the uh, most direct is uh, we're, we're, we're putting out assays at a pace of about, drill assays of, of a pace of about mm. uh, uh, two to, to two to three week intervals. Uh, so they can expect continued grade um, usually, if we put in for if we put in core uh, that looks flashy, it means the next report is going to have good numbers, so people can anticipate that. Um, uh, we've uh, again, we're seeing uh, we're, we're getting a little bit higher rate uh, percentage success rate on extreme grades, and, and those extreme grades, I'm, I'm talking about, you know, eight ten kilometer eight to ten kilograms of silver. Um, and then the other thing they can anticipate, and we try to make it a bit of a narrative, is, is we think we need about uh, between uh, 14 and, and 16 of these uh, high-grade uh, 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 mineralized shoots to, to, to be comfortable with that 50, 50 million SE silver equivalent ounces. And uh, so they can kind of make that count for themselves and see we're on pace. And then, and then the most important thing, obviously, is... is uh, is November November probably uh, putting out a, a resource statement with a, a, a report to be filed not within 90 days later, uh, because um, you know it's um, you can make some comparisons uh, of um, Santa Ana to to some near to, to some fairly recent resource reports. You can look at Visa, the grades uh, 3.6 362 grams silver per ton. If you look at BlackRock Silver, it's 446. Um, we're talking about numbers possibly in excess of 750. So uh, really the holy grail for um, uh, dollars per equivalent um, uh, or EV dollars per ounce is, is Las Chispas. Um, they're up there around 870. Mm. Um, you know, we have some internal numbers. To look at that <laughs> and numbers are a possibility. And it it's a really would be a home run for us. Excellent. Okay, so earlier you touched on your team and you mentioned uh, majority uh, Colombian nationals. Could you just go into some detail there and uh, talk about some of the individuals involved in the exploration? Yeah, uh, we, we have a really strong guy, uh, really an anchor to the team, uh, um, Diego Barantes, Barantos, um, as the country manager. Um, he has to do a lot of the... Uh, you know, maybe some of the more tedious uh, uh, admin type work also, but he, he keeps in track of the whole picture. And then that allows in particular um, our six geologists on the on Santa Ana to do their work, to do it efficiently without worrying about, uh, you know, admin type things. Uh, we have complete support um, through some very experienced um, um, uh, social uh, social license or, or social um, CSR type directors, uh, particularly our, our strongest director on that is a woman named Monica, a lot of experience in country, a lot of respect in country and, and able to make things happen with respect to social license. Um, and then um, very strong uh, VP of exploration, we were able to hire away from, from London Mining. He actually did resource calculations for Fruta del Norte. Um, and also ran the generative program outside. So, uh, you know, he's really tailor-made uh, in terms of his skills for what we really need at this stage um, of producing a resource in the project. 
Fantastic. Okay, so let's talk about some of the social programs that you've got in place there, because obviously you're embedded in Columbia, you've been there a while, you mentioned, and ESG is such a fundamental piece for both companies and investors at the moment. Um, but it's quite tricky for a junior to get it right from the start. So what have you guys been doing? Um, you know, um, there's, there's three things you, there's three aspects that you have to look at is mm. one is, um, well, maybe I should say four. One is the civil, civil uh, governing bodies. Mm-hmm. The other is uh, education. Columbia puts a very high premium on education. Um, the other is um, um, accommodating. We, we don't have the problem yet, but we anticipate the problem of uh, dealing with the arts and minors fairly in a way that supports them. And also that generally draws favorable attention from the government because you aren't just displacing people, you're putting them to, to work with good, healthy jobs. Um, and um, so we do, um, we, we're doing some innovative things like we have an adult uh, education program. Uh, first, primary and secondary education program for adults. Those are kind of open air, but they're with licensed teachers and, and books. Um, we are on the cusp of um, buying and importing $40,000 worth of wheelchairs uh, for the indigenous <laughs> community. Because that's, that's something that the um, countryside wealth of the or the countryside wealth just doesn't really allow for very efficiently so it's 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 something that's really favorable um you uh, what we do is we um it, it's their decision how they spend funds like that but we we contribute monies to the church um benevolence fund um we are actually doing some programs to incle- increase the productivity of of uh, farming uh, in conjunction with the University of Antioquia agronomy department, we're actually, and then we're actually doing, providing materials for food plots uh, to just help general nutrition through growing, uh, I'm sorry, uh, uh, grow, uh, vegetable plots to, to better uh, nutrition. And, um, and then looking for other micro business opportunities, uh, uh, particularly for the women, because the uh, the women have the particular interest of trying to benefit the family. So again, that ties in with the strength of the family. Um, so we are um, um, working with the uh, micro cap type businesses. Mm, excellent. So, yeah, plenty of initiatives going on there. Wonderful. Well, that sort of leads us into my next question around Columbia in general. Um, some of the things you said there sound like it's a good environment uh, for operating in, uh, but perhaps you could tell us more about What's the situation on the ground there and how is it working? Well, the most important metric uh, to view Columbia through is that they're permitting mines and they're, they're permitting mines uh, with, within, a, within a, a probably substantially better than average, global average timeline. Um, w- one thing uh, that we have to put, up, put out up front is that uh, there was a, a the green candidate, leftist candidate, was elected in presidential elections just a few right. weeks ago. Um, but he himself, um, we don't expect his governing to be like his campaigning. He's already put in some um, fairly center center right um, advisors with respect to some of his programs. Um, and then the other thing is is I think that uh, underground type projects that have a lot of uh, local support and, and, and social engagement, I really don't think that we're going to be a target for the government. Um, yep. if, if first of all, first he wants to deal with the uh, uh, macro scale, you know, cl- climate issues, which is coal and oil. Um, and then the next would might be open pits, but we really have, have in Colombia, we've uh, studiously worked uh, in the high grade underground realm, just because that's that's where Columbia people are more comfortable, and that's uh, where the more value is. I think. Yep, excellent. And last thing for viewers, but quite crucially, how are the company financials? How are you looking at the moment? Are you fully funded for this um, current phase of drilling that you're going to complete? Uh, it, at this price, at this year price, um, we we may need. Um, I'm actually working on a kind of a, a minim, minimalist budget to get through the entire drilling campaign mm-hmm. and the publish of the report. 
we may so we may need a small injection of cash towards towards the end of the year. Mm-hmm. Okay. But we'll we'll make that minimal because we what we see is is hopefully a you know a substantial uh, revaluation once we have that resource. You know, I mean, um, if you want to make a comparison or have a comparison, look at BlackRock. Uh, they mm-hmm. they they published a resource of 42.6 million silver equivalent ounces at 446, and they have a market cap five times ours. And, and that basically was a steady ramp um, uh, from, from them, you know, identifying it to producing it. So we think that's a, that could be a fair valuation of our company going forward. And that's what we'd like to raise uh, money at. Yep, certainly. All the elements are pointing in the right direction for that. So, Wonderful. Thanks very much, Joseph, for giving us a really good rundown of the company and the project where you're at at the moment. And we look forward to catching up on SATV again to hear how it's all going. Yeah, well, I love doing that. So uh, it'd be a pleasure talking to you again. Yeah, thank you very much. Thank you.